Many people ask me, why are you involved in deaf ministry? How long did it take to learn sign language? Other questions. People are curious, interested. Why you, Carlene? Why you? Let me tell you my story. In 1966, my husband, Ted Camp, Ted Camp, pastor of a church in Alabama, um, a missionary came, deaf came with him. And that night, the missionary presented sign language interpreted for the deaf. My husband, myself too, curious. Language with hands, very, very interesting. From that missionary, my husband, he became burdened. Deaf are in our area. We need to minister to them. We need to offer a church for them. How? Nobody knows sign language. But Ted contacted a person. You come, willing to teach sign language at our church? I remember myself. It was summertime in 1966. Wow. And I was expecting soon for the birth. I didn't want to be involved in learning sign language. That class every night, too much for me. Too much. So I thought, not me. Anyway, I'm very, very shy, hard to meet people. But pastor's wife, that's me. So I should be example. Maybe I should lead the way. So, okay, I gave in and I sat in the class one week every night. I learned some sign language, yes. I tried my best, but really I'm not comfortable. I thought I will never use sign language. I don't need to concentrate. I don't need to learn, but I want to be a good example. So I stayed in the class. Then soon the baby was born. Um, a couple, husband and wife, Hugh and Edna, Ernest, that couple learned sign language, and they felt a burden to leave the deaf ministry at our church. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. The deaf started coming to our church. My time, concentrated on the baby. No time to practice sign language. I don't need anyway. And also, I thought, deaf people, weird, strange. Remember, I'm very, very shy, hard to meet people. But I watched the deaf in church in their language. But I tried to avoid the deaf people. I can't sign. The deaf people came here, I went there. The deaf people came here, I went there. I didn't know how to communicate, very shy. I didn't want to be involved in that. But one night, the interpreter didn't show up. Where's the interpreter? Where's the interpreter? Not there. I remember in church, the deaf sat over here. I sat over there. Me, I never went over there to talk, nothing. I'm afraid, I think they're weird. I remember in high school, only time I had met deaf people, our school football against the school for the deaf in Georgia. And I saw the cheerleaders, woo, 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 woo. And I saw the football players, they get in the huddle, woo, woo, woo. Wow, strange to me. The only time. And now, here, deaf people in our church. Not for me. I'm afraid. That night, interpreter didn't show up. Why? I don't know. But I watch the deaf people. And they'd look at me, and I'd look away. And I would look, they'd look at me, and I would look away. Then I noticed they were using my name, Carlene, Carlene. I thought, oh, deaf people, they're talking about me. I remember my sign name, Carlene, in the class. Oh, the deaf using that name, Carlene, Carlene. So I looked, they looked, called me. Deaf people said, Carlene, come here. I said, me? Come. Okay. So I get up. What for? I 
said, what? The deaf people said, you interpret. You interpret for us. I go, no, I can't. I can't. You interpret. Remember, I need to be a good example. Lead. Okay. Should stand interpret because good group of deaf people. I can't stand. I'm so afraid. I'm nervous. So I said, chair, please. So they brought a chair. I sat down. Um, I began. I could remember a few signs. Bible, church, God. Then I would spell a word and the deaf people show me the sign. Oh, good. That night, the deaf understood the message, but something happened. Something happened to me that night through their friendly spirit, through their willingness to help me, through their desire and earnestness to learn the Word of God and to be in church that night. Me, I fell in love with the deaf people. Not weird, not strange, a wonderful group of people. Sure, themselves, different language than me. ASL, beautiful language. Some, their culture, different from me, but not important. Wonderful people became friends that night. After that, I began to learn. I want to be fellowship with the deaf people. And I learned and I learned and I would catch and catch and they would teach me. <gasps> wonderful, wonderful. And then with deaf people, my shy went away. They became wonderful friends. And then through the years, since 1966, I've had wonderful opportunity to meet deaf people all over America and many in other countries. A wonderful opportunity. I think I didn't plan that. I believe God planned for me. And maybe that night, interpreter show up, good reason. It's like God said, Carlene, you interpret. You begin in deaf ministry. And since that time, I fell in love that night in 1966, and I've been in love ever since. Um, and I'm thankful. I want to challenge you who think, I can't do that. I feel ministry, a burden for that, but me, I can't. Maybe you're the same as me, shy, and you can't meet people. But with God's help, you can. I say, if me, Carlene, can do it, anybody can. What you need, you need a love for deaf people. You need a love to obey God and to serve other people, and God will use you. Continue to learn. I started learning 1966. When I finished learning, when? I haven't. I'm still learning. 50 years later, still learning. Every time I'm with the deaf people, or I watch other interpreters, or I watch deaf people communicating together, I learn and learn and learn, and I'm still learning. And I'm thankful that God chose me, my husband, to have deaf ministry. He's led us all the way. Um, it's been wonderful. He has blessed and blessed and blessed, and we are so thankful. And I'm so thankful for the deaf people, my friend, and for the hearing people, many all over, who have an interest, who want to learn sign language, who want to be involved learn a different language, learn a different culture, have a love and a burden for somebody else. Thank you.